In this episode of How an Airstream Works, we're going to be talking about heating and cooling the temperature inside your Airstream. This is one of the questions we get asked a lot, and this question is usually from our friends in the south where it's usually hot and humid and muggy in the summer. The number one way, the most efficient way, nature's got it all figured out, to keep your trailer cool is to drive somewhere where it's cool. If you avoid 120 degree places, you're not gonna have to run the AC all the time. If you avoid high humidity, you're not gonna have to run it all the time. If you don't go to Alaska in the middle of winter, you're gonna save propane. These things have wheels on them and you can take them where it's pleasant all the time. And that's our trick. We've run the AC maybe two times a year. We hardly ever run it. And we'd actually be okay not running it too. But let me explain how this whole system works. First, let's talk about cooling. Usually the issue is people are trying to shed excess heat. Now, Airstreams do a really good job. They have a lot of windows, and they all have screens, and they're tinted windows. That keeps a lot of unwanted sunlight out. But here's a few tips. These shades, while beautiful, while these Vista View windows are beautiful and you can see great panoramas, we always keep them closed during the daytime to keep unwanted heat out. Now if it's chilly and it's the winter and we want some heat, we'll open those up and let them in. But for the most part, we keep those closed when the sun's out. The same thing goes for our skylight here. It's night tonight and the sun has gone down, so I leave it open for plenty of beautiful light in here. But during the day, that turns your Airstream into a solar cooker. The sun, just like in your car, the sun's gonna let sun right down here and it's gonna heat up your trailer fast. Great in the winter, not so great in the summer. So we'll close this. Another thing you can do is use breezes. So we're gonna open up our windows here. I mean, Airstreams have such great windows. You know we love them for that. They're also laid out really well so you can get cross breezes going. Our 30-footer had windows everywhere and it was really easy to get a cross breeze. Like if it was blowing from the back corner, we could open a couple windows in the back and a couple in the front and get a nice breeze going through it. Some models have so few windows you can't really get a breeze going at all. Like if everything was closed up and this had nowhere to go, we couldn't get a good breeze. In that case, when you can't get a good breeze, you want to switch to the Fantastic Fans or the Max Air Vents or they're all the same thing with different names, but they're these fans right up here that evacuate hot air. These are very simple. This one has a built-in thermostat. When I turn it to a certain temperature, it'll kick on and then automatically kick off when it reaches that temperature. And that's gonna suck air out. So if you don't have a good cross ventilation system, or even if that's not quite doing it, you can turn on the Fantastic Fan. We have a Fantastic Fan up front and one in the back. And interestingly enough, the hole for an AC unit is the exact same size as for a Fantastic Fan. The Fantastic Fans don't draw much power, and so they do a really good job of not using your batteries up, but moving air and cooling them off. Some models, can be reversible, so you can put one to blow air in and one to suck air out, and you can get a nice little vortex going. For the most part, we just crack one or crack a window and turn the other one on. Now these are also the deluxe ones that have a rain sensor, so if it starts raining, the fan will close itself. Some models have covers that go over the whole thing that allow it to still be open in the rain. That might be a consideration for you if you're in the Pacific Northwest or another area where it's super rainy. For us, we haven't needed it, and it actually added unnecessary height and unnecessary shadows that would shade our solar panels. So that's why we never went with those covers. Another thing you can do to cool it down in your Airstream is to use your awnings. I'm a strong believer in a full awning package. By putting your awnings out, it probably makes it 10 to 15 degrees cooler in the trailer. It keeps the sun from bearing down on the windows and on the whole side of the trailer and shades it all. Also, Airstreams are painted white on top. The aluminum is already pretty reflective and reflects a lot of the sunlight, so you don't get a lot of a cooking in a tin can sensation. But the white uh, top, they've actually done studies and it actually absorbs even less heat than just the raw aluminum. So I would say a car, like if you were to park a car in the sun and walk away, it's gonna get extremely hot. For some reason, people think Airstream trailers do the same thing, but they don't. If you leave a couple things open and get a cross breeze going, it's really quite comfortable in here and we usually don't have to resort to the air conditioner. 
Now, in really hot circumstances or a lot of humidity, you are going to want to use your air conditioner. Over here, we've got a thermostat to turn it on. We switch our thermostat on. Let me show you how this works. We hit our mode button. We're on furnace mode where that'll turn on the heater until it's 77 degrees in here. Off. Here's a fan. That will turn our AC into another fantastic fan, but that's a huge waste of power, so we never use that. Here's cool. That's our AC. We can set our temperature, whatever we want it to be, and the AC will kick on and keep that temperature. That's super helpful for when we have Fender in here and we need to run to the store and we want to keep him in a climate controlled area. And then from here, we have the heat pump mode, and I'll explain that in a minute. So, air conditioner, pretty straightforward. But the air conditioner draws a ton of power, and it only works if you're connected to a generator or plugged into a pedestal. That's how I keep it cool in the Airstream. Now, for some reason, new RV buyers, and we were the same exact way, obsess about insulation. I don't know why. Maybe it's some easy thing that we think we can quantify with an easy number, and we think if it's super insulated, our life's going to be tons better. These are trailers. Even the best insulated trailer in the world is going to get hot when sitting in the sun and cold in the winter time. That being said, Airstreams are true four season units. Airstreams are built like airplanes. They were actually built by a lot of the airplane builders after the war. They had no more jobs and we brought them in and they started building Airstreams, which is cool. So these have a rib skeleton structure like an airplane, kind of like a boat. On the outside we have an aluminum panel. We've got about an inch of a rib and then it has pink insulation in it, just like a house, that soft fiberglass insulation, and then another sandwich of aluminum right here. So the entire trailer, with the exception of the windows, have the pink home insulation sandwiched between them. And they do a very good job keeping this trailer nice and cozy. Now, in the big trailers, the 30 and 32 and 34 footers, they have a lot of air in there to heat up, and so they're a little bit less efficient. That's one huge reason we love the 23 footer. It heats up like that and it cools down like that and it stays that really well. The more windows you have, the less efficient it's going to be as well. And so it's a double edged sword. We love the windows and airstreams, but in our 30 footer, we had a ton of windows in the bedroom and we were always cold out there because every window is a section with no uh, pink insulation. So we prefer to have our bedroom with less windows and our living area with more windows. That just makes a little more sense for us from an insulation standpoint. Now let's talk about heating. Take everything I said about cooling and reverse it. Heating, go to a warm place in the winter. We've got wheels. Uh, go somewhere where it's going to be warm. That being said, these are four season trailers and we've had it down to zero degrees and it's been fine. Nothing freezes, everything works. All of our heaters go to our tanks and they heat our tanks so that the water doesn't freeze in the pipes. It's totally acceptable to take these into lower temperatures. But it does come at a cost. You're going to be running your heater a lot more. And the heater uses up propane and it uses up a lot of electricity, which we didn't really know until our first winter and we were like, man, our batteries are almost always dead every morning. What's going on? Well, the heater was draining them because it was on all night keeping us warm. So, avoid super cold climates, but when it is time to get hot, there's two ways to do it. One, you're never supposed to use your cooktop as a heater, but we would be lying if we said we didn't leave the oven open every now and then after baking some nice fresh goods, it heats up the trailer like that. So if you are cooking, it gets a little bit warm in here, and we love the oven for that feature. The other way is to use the heater. And it's a really simple system. The heater runs off of 12 volt. And in the electrical series, I'll explain all of that. To run the heater, you don't need to be plugged into a pedestal. You could be in the middle of nowhere. You could be in a Walmart. Um, and the heater is going to work for you, provided you have the propane and the battery power to run it. It's really easy. Let me show you how it works. Just like the AC unit, we move this to... There's our mode button. Oops, I passed it furnace set your desired heat and it will kick on make it that heat and then kick off now people have been doing some really creative things to save energy and save battery and save propane they'll run electric blankets with an inverter they will 
uh, add extra propane heaters, all that sort of thing. We just use the built-in heater. Another very interesting solution is the air conditioning can actually be used as a heater in some models. We call that a heat pump. You ever stood outside a building where the big air conditioners were and heard those fans going and notice how hot it was, how those put off a ton of heat? Well, the same thing happens with these. And what the heat pump does is it reverses it. It makes cold air outside and blows all that hot air inside. Now, the heat pump requires a lot of power and you must be plugged in to use it, either plugged into a generator or plugged into a pedestal with full power. But that's a great way to save propane in the winter if you are plugged in at a park. Run that thing and this will heat it up pretty well. I think the heat pump only does something like 20 degrees warmer than the outside temperature. Kind of like how an air conditioning unit only cools things 20 degrees cooler than the outside temperature. So it does have its limitations but it's a great way to save propane. Another thing you can do if the temperature just gets too unbearable, either too hot or too cold, is leave. You can hop in your car and you can go to the library, you can go to a museum, you can go to a park, go to a pool, go somewhere else. You don't have to stay in your Airstream all day long. And that's a good reminder to a lot of people. That's all I can think about heating. A lot of people stress out about all these creative ways to save propane and heat a different way. And I would encourage you before, like we talk to a lot of people who've never been in an RV and they're like, well, I'm going to get these six suitcase solar panels and lay them out here and I'm going to put my water bladder in my van and I'm going to put the trailer in the shade and the truck in the, in the sun so I can get solar on the truck but not on the Airstream and they totally overthink it. And I'm glad people are creative, but give it a try first. Like... With those scenarios, we very rarely find the perfect campsite where we can park in the shade and have enough solar somewhere else and have the bladder where we want and all that stuff. It's It sounds great on paper, but in reality, it doesn't play out that often. So before you scheme up, well, I'm going to replace the water heater with this and <clears throat> I'm going to get this auxiliary heater here and run a catalytic heater there, just try using your Airstream as it was built first. You may end up loving it like we did. We didn't need any modifications for heating or cooling, and we love it. And we're glad we didn't do any modifications on that. Anyway, long-winded way of showing you how you control your temperature in an Airstream and other RVs as well. If you learned something from this video and you benefited and it will save you money down the road, consider supporting us on Patreon.com. For three bucks a month, you can make a big impact to us to help us be able to keep making more videos like this.